do a little uh, stand-up act for us, and he is going to answer some questions about his life as an advocate and as, you know, just an overall really cool dude. So I'm not even going to talk much. Frank is just going to take it away. Hi, everyone. It is good to see you. If you are only little squares on my screen showing about half of you, I guess we... I guess we all have just accepted this is the way life is now. I hear Harrison Ford's last indie movie it, it is called Indiana Jones and the Temple of Zoom. Indy doesn't die. He just disappears forever when he is that one guy who can't figure out how to leave the meeting when it's over. I promise that that's my only dumb COVID joke. I'm actually here to, to tell you a, a, a little about a life with Down syndrome. We have limited time, so like Meghan Merkel said to, to the queen, I won't be keeping, I won't be keeping you long. So for those who don't know about Down syndrome, let me explain. When my body was first forming, when the first two cells divided. Each of them had one extra chromosome. For those of you who don't know a lot about Down syndrome, oh, sorry. People like me tend to be a little shorter because our, our arms and legs are shorter than most people. Our faces are usually a little bit flatter than most people's because our cheekbones and noses don't stick out from our faces as much. All that adds up to a person who is a little bit uncommon. In my case, uncommonly handsome. Don't worry, I am very accepting, very inclusive. I will think less of you just because I have more chromosomes than you do. I am here to answer questions you may have about, about life with an intellectual disability. People often ask me about Dating. Yeah, da dating's tough when you have Down syndrome. So I know it's tough for everybody. I know, but how well do, do you think I'm doing a line like, hey, this has been really nice. Do you want to come back to my place? I'm Pretty sure mom and dad have already gone to bed. Already. Of course, I am, of course, when, when I am on the road giving speeches, I have my own room. Yeah, you see where I'm going? Right? It goes something like this. Well, um, maybe you could come up to my room for a little nightcap or something. I like that. Yes. Let me just 
Tell my driver he can go. Yes. Oh, daddy. Sometimes I feel like we just can't win. I have spent decades trying to e erase old stereotypes, like neckties that are, are too short or way too long. With weird haircuts. Building walls to keep people out. An, an odd manner of speech. In addition to social media, and a tendency to blurt out what, 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 whatever crazy thought that pops into our head, we work our butts off to fix all that stuff. But then Donald Trump gets elected president doing all that stuff. Actually, I have been able to make pretty good use of my extra chromosome. I have been to the White House several times. I have spoken to Congress many times and I didn't have to jump any fences or break down doors to do it. I have danced with supermodels. I had Katy Perry Sing, baby, you are a firework. Directly to me. I have spoken all over the world on behalf of people with Down syndrome. I have spoken to the United Nations in Geneva the OECD in Paris, lobbied, no, no, yeah, lobbied parliament in London, uh, and convinced Congress to add $100 million to Alzheimer's research. Not bad for a guy who wasn't allowed in a creative writing class in high school because the teacher thought I would never, that I could never do that kind of work. Let me be serious for a minute and tell you something that might help you understand Down syndrome and many other intellectual disabilities a little better. To be honest, the hardest thing about having an intellectual disability is the loneliness. It is easy for us to become isolated from the rest of you. Even in a simple conversation, we face a difficult decision. We process information more slowly than the, 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 the rest of you. Well, maybe not slower than your average sophomore, but slower than most of you. That's also hard for us to focus on more than one thing at a time. So when a conversation begins, we listen for the topic at the beginning, then we, we, we must choose. Do we just listen and never contribute? Or do we just stop listening and begin thinking of what we want to say? If we choose at the beginning to start thinking, often the conversation moves on and then we, and when we do speak, we seem completely out of sync with the rest of you. Or maybe just repeat what someone else said after we stopped listening. It can be very frustrating to see the blank 
or condescending looks in your faces. The most important quality you can have in your interactions with people with Down syndrome is patience. And close behind that is expectation. Expect something interesting. You won't be disappointed if you are patient. Who knows? One day, one of them might just introduce you to a president or maybe even Katy Perry. I think we have some time for me to take some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great, great job, man. That was amazing. Uh, but yeah, we do have a bunch of questions for you. Um, so the first one is coming from one of the Best Buddies officers, Rachel. You want to go ahead and ask the first question? Yes, yeah, sorry. Let me get to the doc. Um, so my first question is, what does inclusion look like inside of education in schools? Okay, uh, say it again. What does inclusion like of people of all abilities look like in like a school setting? Inclusion. Well, we can put things together. People uh, put proms together. They put special Olympics together. They put, um, it's like uh, getting out and contributing to your, to your neighborhood. All right, cool. Um, Jonathan from our Stride classroom has a question. Uh, somebody wants to unmute him. Jonathan, are you around to ask your question? I have a question. Okay, I'll ask the question. How questions is Frank and I does? Am I here? Hi. Yeah, I do. You're here. Frank, what is your favorite part? Jonathan, did you say what's your favorite part? Frank, what's your favorite part? Favorite part? What's your favorite part of your job, Frank? Frank. Oh, my favorite part of my job. Well, well, in my job now, I get to um travel the world again, it's gonna be fun. I get to uh, lobby for people, uh, yes, for the, the Alzheimer's research, but, but, but also it's for people who are getting, uh, contribute to the global heart syndrome. Did I answer your, your, your uh, question? Yeah, I think that was perfect. Um, I think Jonathan might've had another question if he wants to ask it. Sure. Yeah, Jonathan, it's in the chat. Do you want to read the question that Ms. Peixoto put it in the chat? Uh, I have a question. All right. Oh, Stephen, you're going to go next. Oh, oh yeah, Stephen. right. What have been the biggest challenges to overcome? Challenges to overcome. Well, one of the biggest challenges, well, I know, Yes, Down syndrome is one of the biggest ones, but also um, uh, the biggest challenge that I ever uh, overcome was uh, being in school and also uh, when you have Down syndrome, you do attract bullies, but I I did write a, a anti-bullying speech to help in, in school, help them with that telling them that it's not, not okay to keep bullying, because if we do, then people don't like us very much, right? Oh, well, like I said, spread the word to end the word. Yeah, right. Spread the word to end the word. That's perfect. Um, I'm going to ask Jonathan's question, because I think he got a little confused. So, Frank, uh, what inspires you? to be an advocate and to speak the way you do. One figure 
that apparently that inspired me was when I was in Geneva, I was right there by a statue and, and I was reading it, the contents of it. And apparently that was a statue of Mahatma Gandhi where he said, my life is my message. So I use that some of the times in my speeches. So you like to use your life and your experiences and you know use that as your message to other my, people? My life is my message. That's amazing. That's awesome. Cool. Um, I think Arjun is up next. Yeah, hey Frank. Um, so I guess my question for you was, um, could you describe what it means to expect competency? And then how can teachers show this in a school setting? Um, I, what do you mean? A comp yeah, so expect the best from, from their students. So the, your student, uh, if you're a teacher, they want you to do really good. So how can, how can teachers show this for students with disabilities? Um, how can they motivate them to be the best of themselves? Basically, like teaching us like every, every other student. Why not let me do some math and see if I can do math. There are some maths I know. Um, addition, subtraction. I tried multiplication, but a little difficult along with division. But, but also, um, uh, some of the thing. Uh, what did you say be before? Yeah. So, how can teachers be inclusive of students with disabilities to help them do the best um, they can in school? Well, teachers can can just keep, like maybe, help them learn. Like sometimes, learning blocks are fun for people like us because the more you help, the more. Th they get a chance to get smarter. It's when you help them, that's what makes a good chance at, at where people can can learn to teach people with Downs. And it's like, when you see them learn, it, it's just like something fun. That's why there's a place called Gigi's Playhouse and they do it for toddlers. Toddlers, what, what down? And he's playing out it's right, up, right up your alley and I bet they will sign up on that paper saying spread the word to end the word. Sounds good, thank you. Okay, Rachel, are you asking a question from Mrs. Stoker now? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll ask the question that, oh shoot, I replaced the spotlight instead of adding. Um, I'll ask the question that she put in the chat. So what do you like to do for fun? Well, for fun, I'm definitely going out with my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, also, um, uh, uh, I get to talk out with mom now and then, which is nice. I know that my mom has Alzheimer's and it's tough. So we're hanging in there, but at least we get to have fun with mom now and then, but also I get to do computer at times. My Xbox, a uh, one. How about you? What do you do for fun? I come on calls like this. Me too. All right, I think Esther has a question. So I'm gonna move my spotlight. Where is Esther? Um, can you see, can you pin me? Okay, there we go. All right, so my question is, um, what is an effective way to get people to understand and embrace disabilities and differences? Okay, one more, one more time. What is an effective way to get people to understand and embrace disabilities and differences? Well, they can learn to embrace it by um, knowing what it's like to be born with Down syndrome. It's tough for people with Down syndrome to learn new things because they need constant help. 
sometimes uh, there are people that help us teach teach us that, like our teachers, our parents, our loved ones. Okay, um, give me that question one more time. Yeah, of course. So what can people do? What is an effective way to help people to understand and embrace disabilities or differences? Well, they can learn to embrace that by, um, okay, one more time, please. Um, I think Rachel typed it in the chat. Would that be easier for you to read it? And I think that- One more time. I listened to one of your speeches, Frank, when you talked about how important it is to know somebody with Down syndrome, to understand their life and to come to, to love them for who they are, right? I think- they can learn to love them. They can learn, because um, um, all we do is we, all we want to do is we aim to please. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're, pretty, we're heartwarming. We try to, we, we look at things differently than most people because um, um, uh, some people kind of have we have, we have the world we have, we have the world differently, but to us we just accept the world for for what it is because um why because we have fun. Mm -hmm. That's us, the fun crowd. That's what Downs mean. Yeah. So, so people who embrace the fact that we are Downs, and all we want to do is learn to learn to be your friends. Right, so people who have relationships and get to know people with different abilities, different um, needs and uncommon people, then they will come to be more aware and understanding, right? Yeah, like I said, when I'm uncommonly handsome. I'm yeah. <laughs> so, hi, Frank. Hi. First of all, your jokes are hilarious. And my question for you is, if you had to pick one thing, what would you say your greatest accomplishment is? Well, doing the things, what, what, what I do overseas, like um, when I'm doing the OC, the, the OECD in Paris, as well as uh, lobbying parliament in London, that when you get a chance to, to do that, it just comes naturally because I do a fairly good, 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 good amount, amount of speeches. So when you learn all that, it's the most unique thing to see someone like me do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You can tell they're living their life the way they want. And that makes me happy. Jill, would you like to ask your question? Hi, Frank. Um, my question is, how can we advocate in our own community? How can we what? How can we advocate in our own community? Oh, can you tell me what you mean by advocate? For people with disabilities. Oh, um, you advocate, that means you got to find a particular group that you want to speak to. And if you they let you, then you have to get with your speech, you have to slow and steady as the turtle is what I do when I get ready for a, for, for a speech. So when I'm getting ready for that and then you gotta keep going over it and over it and over it till you get better at it. Then once you get better at that, you can learn almost anything is possible when you give a really good speech. Like, like looking at the camera and smiling, and also giving a, a, a speech. Hello, Leon. Uh, yes, hello there. Hello. Hi, Tori. You want to ask your question? Sure. Hi, Frank. I'm Tori. And I'm wondering, what's the coolest place you've traveled? Um, besides London and Paris and, 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 and Geneva, I think we don't really say the White House. And also, um, 
getting the chance to get an uh, an actual dinner at the White House and having yet Katy Perry sing to me. That's really cool. Yeah. Sorry, um, I think we're going to, okay, there you go, Sean. Um, my question, hi, Frank, first of all, I'm Sean, nice to meet you. Um, my question is kind of a continuation to Tori's last question. If you can go to any place right now, where would it be? I really want to go to China. I have not been to China. I, I, I want to. Seem like the coolest place to go. I'm gonna wait until until COVID's done but before all that happened, right? Yeah, soon, soon. I can't wait because on Saturday, guess what? I'm getting my second shot. So this is Kale. He's the National Honor Society president, so he's been helping out a lot with us. Oh, hi, right, Frank. Um, for one, thank you so much for this because your comedy is great and it's really great to have um, some insight into all of this. Um, so my question is, how important do you believe accepting terminology is in creating positive change with regards to uh, acceptance and tolerance of um, the uncommon people? Yeah, say that again and tell me what you mean by that. So for example, like with initiatives such as spread the word to end the word, obviously that's created a lot of positive change towards mm -hmm. um, just sort of mindset and stuff, but how important do you believe like campaigns such as that to change terms and change the words that we use are in creating a better world? Well, there I, I can talk about my open letter to Miss Coulter. I know you all know her, right? Well, um, sometimes it's hard to get acceptance from people, but when you, okay, um, uh, tell me again what you said. How important do you believe the words are that we use when we're referring to, when we're trying to create acceptance and referring to um, people who are uncommon? Sometimes words do hurt, like the words like, oh, it's like creating moron, retard. I hate those words. I mean, it's like it's like people don't understand that when they well, when they say something that is offensive, they shouldn't say it. They should just learn to accept people for who they are. Um, like saying accepting people like Don. It's like accepting all the people, like all my. My friends, like like my friends now in best buddies, and also in special Olympics and global. I mean, we are trying so hard to change that outcome. That's why I like spread the word to to end the word. It helps people change their mind and to learn to like people with down. We need that like. We need that love. We need a chance to show that love to the world. But when we'll start treating us that way, it just hurts, right? That's very true, Frank. And Kale, thanks for the question. Um, this is gonna be the last one on our end. And then um, if you've been sending in the chat or if you um, wanna send it to like me, Rachel, Mr. Bishoto, or any of the officers, we'll open it up. But uh, I guess last question from us is, um, Ooh, I lost my, okay. Um, you mentioned um, your creative writer teacher earlier and how you um, proved, proved to her that you are really creative and you're a great writer. So what advice would you give to teachers like your creative writing teacher in the I future? Get my book, Good Writing. I got one. When I first did that book with that person, that book became when I'm on. And I actually got that book straight out of London. Hello? Oh, we're here. You think you, I think you just lagged out a little bit. So when I first did that book, that book became instant phenomenon. So my writings are in that book. 
you get a chance to, to read it, it'd be cool. I, I have a question. Oh, I guess we're just going to go with Crystal, but I think that's I think it would be great if teachers could um, read what you talk about, Frank. So, okay, but, uh, we're going to open up questions to everyone else now. Dr. Crystal. All right. Yeah, you guys go. Do you live by yourself or with someone? Yeah, I live with, 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 with my folks. Mom, dad. I think they asked if you live by yourself or with someone else. I, I'm still here okay. with my family. Mom, dad. Do you have a pet? Yes, I live with my my pet. My um, Christelle just asked, "Do you have a pet?" I used to have a pet, but he died a long time time ago. I lost my dog. Even now, what's his name? Juicer. Call him Juicer because my brother. What's his? His actual name was Bickle Juice. Hi, Frank. Hi. Uh, my question was, do you have a favorite sport? Oh, I've got many. Um, I play basketball, golf, horse riding, uh, soccer. It's kind of hard to name, name, name them all because one, I, uh, um, I would love to pick all of them, but. <laughs> do you have a favorite one to play? Has never said all this. <laughs> Heroid free. <laughs> What's your favorite sport to play? Definitely basketball. That's a good one. Me too. Uh, football. Oopsie. Um, I think we're waiting. I don't think we have any more questions, but Vicky, go. Um, <laughs> I think that was Jonathan's voice. Um, what is the title of your book? I'm just curious. And people uh, in the chat want to know. The, the book I just mentioned. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that book that book was called A Good Writing. I've done another one called Stand Up for seventy five. You know what? I'll tell you what, I'll go grab that for you. That way people can see it. While he's gone, Rachel, that was actually me. Vicky had a question, but it's all good. Let me ask that to you guys next time because I'm apparently it's been moved. Let's just say my mom likes to move things around so I Hard to find things. All right. Uh, yeah, Vicky had a question. Yeah. Hi, Frank. I was just wondering, um, you know, in your experience, you know, traveling all over the world, what is a good way to, you know, inspire others to change, um, you know, and, and inspire change in others? Inspire change. Um... Like being nicer and knowing what to say is not the right thing to say, and we spread the word. To end the word is mm -hmm. a way to do that. And when you go overseas and you're and you're giving a speech, the thing is to uh, just just uh, be you, be, be who you want to be. Um, whatever you want to talk about, it's fine. It's just. Keep going over and over it and over it until it gets familiar, and then you have it. People would also call me Mister um, either rock star or, 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 or at times I get called Mister Elvis. As my dad always says, "He's my Colonel Tom." So, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. What? I just said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. 
I think Crystal has one more question, and then if we don't hear anyone else, anyone else, I'm gonna have one last question to end it off. Does that, does that sound good? Excuse me. Sound good, Frank? <laughs> All right. So. Hi, Crystal. Are you a teacher? Am I a teacher? I wish I would. It'd be kind of cool. But I, I would teach um, if I had a, a, a student to teach. I think you're I think you're teaching us a lot today. So in many ways you are a teacher. Um, I think that's about it from the chat. I just want to thank you really quick for coming to speak with us today. Um, I, like as I said before, I'm a huge fan of you. And I think I think um, from what I've been seeing, uh, the, our students have really liked it. But um, before you go, I just want to ask you, what's your fit? What's um, what's your favorite thing about having down? What's your what's the, what's your favorite? What's I don't know how to phrase this because I'm going on the fly. Um, what's your favorite part about being a man with Down syndrome? What's your favorite part about having Down syndrome? Well, just constantly have fun. People be, be, be life with Down syndrome is um, all, all, all we want to do is be well liked, have friends, have a steady girlfriend, and maybe someday get married or or have a a good life. I mean, that's the only thing I, I can say about. The, the, the thing is, live your life to, 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 to the fullest. That's what I do. Because, um, why? Because I'm, I, I, I'm a good person. And I know that being a good person means I get a chance to tell you guys, thank you. Thank you, Frank. I think that you're really helping further the message of spread the word to end the word week. And I know that Joey and I and the rest of the club are so, so excited you were able to join us. You're welcome. And as a, as a younger brother to a big sister of Down syndrome, I can definitely speak to, I think Down syndrome, people with Down syndrome, they know how to have fun and they know how to love life. And I think it's, what you said is absolutely beautiful. And um, thank you to everyone for coming out today. It means a lot to us. I think it means a lot to Frank, and thank you, Frank, for being with us. It was an absolute pleasure. Do you guys know Jenny Alden? She's a big supporter of Best, best Buddies. Not, I'm not sure I do, but good to hear. But, uh, Frank, I, you could look in the chat. Look at everyone saying thank you. Yeah. So nice. Look at all these nice messages. Everyone's pretty stoked. Thank you guys for joining us. Welcome. Have a good All night, right. everyone. Uh, Rachel, do you want to end the recording? Just so I don't screw it up. Oh, I, I don't think I can end it because I didn't start it. <laughs>